your seatbelts because we have two complete bombshells in transgender world today. First, we've all wondered why the people we see pushing the claim that because there are detransitioners, no one should get gender affirming surgeries. We've all wondered why is it always the same few people? And today we got two not astonishing, but nonetheless amazing confirmations explaining exactly why. This morning, the Washington Post dropped a detailed report featuring Carrie Callahan, an Ohio detransitioner who, even though she detransitioned, testifies in favor of gender affirming care, understanding that to really do no harm means you provide medical care for those for whom it's appropriate. The Callahan story's real message isn't just her personal saga, remarkable though it is. It's what she revealed about those very few who become known as detransitioners. Right-wing anti-trans organizations like the Heritage Foundation, the Family Policy Alliance, and the Alliance Defending Anything But Actual Freedom actually sponsor detransitioners, providing them with first-class travel, hotels, meals, even offering to ghostwrite testimony and newspaper articles, pushing their extremist, regressive message about transgender people, even twisting the detransitioner's words to convey an anti-trans message when that's not at all what the detransitioner has actually said. But atop that remarkable story, no less than the Journal of the American Medical Association came out with a report on gender-affirming surgery and regret rates. And it both suggests the reason why there are so few detransitioners, and it completely undercuts those banning gender-affirming care, claiming they're doing no harm. The American Medical Association article states that regret rates for gender-affirming surgeries are less than 1%, as compared to the broader universe of surgeries in which the regret rate is 14.4%. In short, the reason you can't find more than a handful of detransitioners or people regretting their gender-affirming surgeries is that those people just don't exist. Now, that is not to say that a detransitioner's story shouldn't be heard, or that their experience isn't valid for them. But what it does say is that the organizations pushing these stories and paying to publicize them have their own agendas, which in my experience stem from one of two things. Number one, someone in the organization has a trans family member and they are very upset about it. Or more often, they claim being transgender somehow violates their religious beliefs. To which my only response is, since when is anyone else, much less the government, supposed to limit other people based on your superstition? Because your freedom of religion ends where anyone else's begins.